Okay, still here in Austria. <laughs> I'm actually here in Austria for Global Bike Fest. I'm on assignment with bike flights here uh, in the beautiful Alps. I freaking love this place. I haven't been back to Austria since I did Worlds with the US Mountain Bike National Team in 2012, I think, uh, in Salfelden, just over the mountain. And uh, it's good to be back. This place is out of a storybook. It's like heaven on earth for me. Um, so anyway, let's jump into this Finland recap. So Finland gravel, about half the distance of uh, Unbound, 110 miles with like less than 5,000 feet of climbing. Basically, this was gonna feel like a cross race to me compared to Unbound. Honestly, we got off the line and the first hour of the race basically was a cross race. A um, Couple world tour guys on the roster. Uh, Brennan Wirtz came over from the US. Pete Stetna also from the US. So maybe like three or four, five guys came over from the US that had done Unbound. Yeah, it was a big question mark on how the legs were gonna feel. I took the week very, very conservatively. Did a little bit of some efforts on Thursday to just wake the body up. Uh, but the weird thing was like, uh, Finland is basically in a 24 hour no, uh, no darkness t zone. So uh, trying to get on a good sleep schedule was tough. I am terrible at sleeping on planes. So the transatlantic flight, I caught zero amount of sleep. I tried the whole time, but it did not work. Uh, and then getting over to Finland and without the, the day night cycle, my circadian rhythm was just all janked up. I didn't feel terrible coming into the race. I felt well rested and so I was like looking forward to push and that was my mentality. I was kind of in redemption mode, you know? I, I said in my last race recap that I learned a lot about kind of myself, what I needed to be able to push really hard for really long and so I was kind of eager to like see if I could change some things from my experience at Unbound. Off the line, uh, pretty chaotic mass start, but found myself uh, towards the front of the group. We started on uh, a Nordic center, big Olympic Nordic center with ski trails. The first uh, 15K or so were all on ski trails, which was really fun and swoopy. Uh, good for me to like kind of work up through the group, high speed, turning, loose gravel. Uh, I was really into that. And then we popped out onto kind of like the roads and the double tracks that the course had to offer. There was some firepower at the front and we ended up pushing the first hour uh, at like 336 watts. It was full gas. Uh, with, without any climbs, there was a lot of just like really steep little rollers that were always getting pushed up over. There was always somebody that was sitting in the draft ready to come around and put more power down on the attack. So it was just like constant counter attacks, like washing machine effect through the front group. I made it to 35 miles in and then unfortunately I suffered a mechanical. Uh, I, I slipped my seat post we hit a really chunky gravel section that was just really banging down on my seat and my seat post slipped like a solid inch and a half. It was just too much to, to continue without fixing it. So at 35 miles in, I had to stop and raise it. Um, I thought maybe I could catch back onto the group because we hit a pavement section. I thought maybe the pace would lull. It did not. Um, for that thir first 35 miles, which was roughly an hour and a half into the race, we did a whopping 325 watt average with 364 watt normalized power. And my average heart rate was 163 beats a minute. Uh, it's hard to say. I don't know if the pace slowed at all after that. Um, I would have liked to have been there and seen how long I could st stick it out in that group. Unfortunately, with the mechanical, I just had to bag it. And then I rode the next seven miles by myself. The second chase group caught me, which was another big group of about 10 or 15 riders. Um, so I just kind of settled into that and tried to hide when I could, do some work when I could, uh, just stay out of trouble. Um, 
just rotating through. There weren't really any attacks. Everybody was kind of content on just rolling at a decent pace and getting to the finish. So we were kind of together for the next 60 miles and, and it was just kind of nice to take in the scenery. It was a beautiful day. A really amazing course, had some really cool roads. Everybody was working more or less like equally and uh, you know, well together. So it went by really fast for me. Uh, I was really trying to, without the stress of like worrying about attacks and stuff, I was really, really trying to stay on top of my nutrition. No aid station stops for me. I did a similar nutrition setup that I did for Unbound. Um, two 32 ounce bottles with a 1.5 liter hydration pack on my back. Uh, I did six scoops in my back of flow formulas. Uh, and then I did five scoops in each bottle and I packed enough Never Second Gels, C30 Never Second Gels for two an hour and I was sucking those down. Uh, I think by the end of the race I had seven, I had seven gels down, I completely cleared out my hydration pack and my bottles. It ended up being like 660 grams of carbs for the five hour effort. Um, which is, is what I needed because uh, by the end of the race, I would have burned over a thousand calories an hour. Coming into the final climb, uh, there was a climb roughly 12K to go. Back into the ski trail, we kind of like rejoined the, the lollipop, the stick of the lollipop loop. And there was a good punch, really steep but short climbs. It was only about an eight minute effort, which like steep and then flattened out and steep again. It was a 350 watt effort average. Normalized power was 365. Average heart rate for me was 166. And after we got to the top of that final climb, it kind of rolled, gradually descended back into the, the ski center where the start was. Um, the groups were kind of breaking up. Uh, there was a couple people up the road. It was really an exciting finish and that last 10K went by really quick for me. It all culminated into a drop into the, the final section that then kicked up a final huge punch of a climb. It was maybe only a, I don't know, 10, 15 second effort, but it was like a thousand watts up that thing. Uh, jumped on uh, some guy's wheel navigated the last couple corners like really well and then i uh, wasn't able to come around the one guy in my group but finished up 15th and uh closed down a massive day it was five like five hours and five minutes 110 miles like i said i burned over a thousand calories an hour average power for that was 286 watts normalized power was 316 my average heart rate is 158. You know, kind of took away the question mark on how I'd feel after racing Unbound just a week before. Felt really good and was able to push, which was great. Uh, really bummed about the mechanical. Like I said, I would have loved to been able to be with that front group a little bit longer and see if I could have made up a couple more spots. But that's the way it goes. Uh, I thought I'd tightened it enough. I rode it three or four times before the race. No problems, I guess. Um, just the, the chunky, bumpy bits on the course just kind of were too much. Should have had another half turn or quarter turn on the, on the torque spec. Uh, anyway, so now Finland gravel's over. Like I said, I'm here in Austria. We're doing Global Bike Fest. GCN's hosting some riding and, and we're here talking about bike flights. So I'm kind of taking a bit of a mid-season break uh, after Finland Gravel, all I really did was went on a Helsinki bike tour where I got this fresh haircut. <laughs> and uh, that's about it. Traveled here by, by, by plane and by train and uh, got to check out the amazing countryside yesterday. I'll be here until Tuesday when I fly back home to Roanoke and then start putting work in for the second half of the season. The next race that you'll catch me at is probably gonna be Mountain Bike Nationals in Southeastern PA at Bear Creek, 
which is where I won U23 Nats in 2013, and then the next year placed second in the Elite Race. So I'm excited to get back to that course and race on some proper mountain bike trails. You know, we have a bunch of rock in southeastern PA, so if you're targeting that event, you might want to go find some rocks and go ride them. <laughs> Uh, and then after that, I don't have anything until Leadville, so I'll be heading straight out to Colorado after Mountain Bike Nats to get ready for that. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions or comments, put them, put them down below, and uh, yeah, I'll see you guys at the next one. Thanks for watching.